Hello everyone, FunshineX here. This is another computer craft tutorial. Today's tutorial is the wireless modem, one of the coolest little peripherals that you can get for the computer because it allows you to talk to computers to talk to each other or you can talk to turtles wirelessly. I'm going to show you all about how the, uh, the API works and show you a couple cool programs that you can write yourself to, uh, to take advantage of these modems. Uh, looking forward to it. Let's check the, the first set of APIs. Okay, the first thing I'd like to show you is, uh, first we have a computer here, and it's got a modem on top. Uh, just shift-click to place a modem, and you'll notice that this one is red. If I put a new one on here, let's see if I can put it on. It's black, so you can tell if the modem is on or off based on if it has a black or red si signal. Over here I've got one, and this one's got the modem on the left, and it's turned off right now. And then over here I've got a turtle. If you'll notice the turtles, the front um, is probably different on your texture pack, but you can assume the uh, pickaxe is on the left and the modem is on the right. It's hard to see because the disk drive is here, but uh, the modem on a turtle is always going to be on the right. You can't add one to the turtle. Okay, so that's my setup. I'm going to have these three, uh, two computers and one turtle talk to each other. Let's look at the... Okay, so first let's start with the API that you have available, and this is under the RedNet API. Uh, you can open and close, and basically that means turn on and off the modem. Uh, so you need to specify which side the modem is on. And again, if you're working with a turtle, the modem is always on the right side. If you're working a computer, it could be any side. Uh, the next set is how you send messages. The first one is the simplest, and that's just announce. You don't get to send any message or anything. You're just saying, uh, I'm, I'm on, I'm announcing that I'm a, a modem that's sending a signal. Other computers can then receive that signal and say, oh, okay, I know uh, what what the ID of the computer is that sent it, or uh, I know how far away the computer is that sent it. And so that just gives you an announce. That's really all it is, just to tell other computers you're on the network. Uh, the next one, I've kind of got them in, in a little bit different order here. Let me actually move this one up. And that's a broadcast. And that just means broadcast to anyone that wants to listen, any modem that's within 50 blocks around you. Here is a message um, for you to receive. So this message is to strings. So you can say, hey, I'm here, or I'm go do something, you know, tell it a command, that kind of thing. And then that computer can receive it and act accordingly. The next one is a send, and that one you specify the ID of the computer you want to send it to. So if I'm sending it to computer 4 and a message, computer 5 will not be able to read that message. It's um, secure. It will only go to the ID of the computer or turtle that you send it to. So think of announce as just announcing the world, broadcast as sending a message to everyone, and send as sending a message to a specific modem. Okay, and then the last one is how you read a message, and that's receive and you give it a timeout. And that's not saying receive from computer 4, that's saying receive any message. And if you leave the timeout blank or null, it'll just say keep receiving forever and telling a message. If you put a value that out there, it's like 5, it'll, that means receive for the next 5 seconds, try to receive. And if I don't get a message, then just keep doing whatever um, else I need to do. Uh, we've seen before the OS pull event function. Okay, now OS pull event, um, remember if we receive a message, we can check if the event is called rednet message. Um, that's just one of the other events that can be returned. And this one has three parameters if that's the event. The sender ID, so that's the ID of the computer or turtle that sent the message. Uh, the actual message itself is a string. And the distance, which is a value, uh, the distance away from a computer or the, the, val the whoever's receiving the event. Okay, so let's go right into some simple... Uh, calls. The first one, uh, we're going to uh, be using this one pretty much uh, to start with. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this guy. And all he's going to do is open the top modem, and he's just going to pull events. And when he gets an event that's a RedNet message, he's going to just print out that he got an event and what the parameters were. So that's just kind of a, so we can see what's happening. So I'll go ahead and save that one. And then the second computer, we're going to open the left modem. And let's just announce and then close the modem and see what happens. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll go over to Minecraft. And I want to go ahead and reboot this guy. And so he's just going to be receiving messages. Okay. Remember all he's doing in announcing. So we got what 
three events. So I think, uh, hold on, I've got another one enabled. My bad. Try that again. You can see um, each one prints out the ID uh, when they're running because I got three wireless tutorial programs and I just don't want to get confused between the number and the actual ID of the computer. So when these boot up that you can see they all say, you know, here's what my ID is and then the program will tell it its ID. Okay, so that's computer four. And all this guy did was an announce and then quit. And you can see he got an event. The sender was three. There was no message and the distance was six. And if we count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six blocks away. So it doesn't, it's not the block where the modem is because technically the modem is on this block. It's the from computer to computer, the, the distance. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to computer three and comment out that guy. And this time we'll do a broadcast. And this will say hello from computer three. Okay, he sent the message and you'll see this guy got an event and here's the sender's three again. The distance is still six, but this time we got a message. Hello from number three. Cool. Okay, now let's do the last type of sending, which is a direct send. And he's gonna send a message to two and four. And if we're, uh, we coded this correctly, the message should only go, or this guy should only get one event because he's ID4. So I'm just going to say hello from four, or two are you there, four are you there, and this guy got a message, number four are you there. So he never saw that one that went to number two. It's completely secure. Okay. So now let's do one where we actually send something back. So this one's going to say open the left a modem, ask number four if he's there, and then we're going to wait for five seconds to try to receive a message back. If uh, after those five seconds the SID is null, that means we didn't get a message back. So we'll say four is not there. If we did get a message, then SID will be populated with the ID, which would be four, of course, because we're sending to four. Um, and then it's going to reply for message four and tell us the message that it got back, got back, and then close the modem down. Okay. Use the other program here on three. This is going to say pull event, and if it gets an event, it's going to return the message to whoever sent it. That's P1 is the ID of the person that sent it, and said, okay, I got your message. So we need to make sure that we restart this guy first. Okay, and he's waiting for messages. Now I'll go ahead and reboot this guy. You'll say, oh, see, he sent a message over here. He got the message and he sent it back. And the message that he received was, message received loud and clear from number four. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear that guy. Now this one, we are going to let's see, make sure I don't have anything else open. Um, open a uh, the top modem again, and then we're going to send to number two. And number two is the turtle, uh, and we're going to tell it to go left, or to turn left. We're just going to send it a message called left. And then we're going to try and receive a message back, and we're only going to wait one second. And if uh, if we don't get anything back, we're going to say, well, this possibly be our turtle's out of range because there's only 50 blocks of range on a modem, or it's been destroyed. Uh, so we print that out and return uh, end. Okay, so we can go ahead and look back to this guy, and you'll see that the turtle, uh, he just pulls events, and he only gets them from number four, so if anyone else sends him events, he doesn't care. And as soon as he gets the event, he's going to reply back saying that he got it. Just acknowledge, I got your message. And then he's going to check what the message was. If the message was left, he's going to turn left, right, turn right, etc. different commands. And if he gets a return, he's just going to move down 20 times. That's kind of like go back to the start. Okay, so that guy's good to go. This one. 
good. And I'm going to comment all of these guys out so we don't want them running anymore. We can go back to Minecraft. Okay, so let's start up our, uh oh, our turtle has gone up to the sky. So let's actually change our, pro well, yeah, we can do it. Let's make sure he's still running. Yep, he's waiting. He's number two. And let's go ahead and restart this. And you could, should see our turtle over there turn left one. And if we do it again, our turtle will turn again. There he goes. Okay. Easy enough. That's what it would be. How you could send a simple message to a turtle to tell him to do things. Uh, so you could write a complex program. So let's go back here. And this time, instead of just telling him to do left, we're going to make him dance. Open the top modem. We're going to go for uh, 20 iterations. So each time we do it, we're going to increment the iterations. As soon as we get to 20, we're going to tell him to return back to start. Uh, then we're going to do get a random number between 1 and 4. If it's 1, then we'll turn left, 2, right, 3, up, 4, down. So he might was moving kind of random, either turn or move up or down. And then we'll get to receive a message back just to make sure he got the message. If not, then we'll say, oh, it's probably, he's probably gone out of range or he's been destroyed. So let's go ahead and enable that one. And he's still running the same program. And let's watch our turtle dance here. Oh, he's going up and up. Am I in creative mode? There we go. So he's going to do 20 random movements, and then he'll get a return signal eventually here. There, he got the return signal. He's going to move all the way back down to start. Cool. All right, so you guys know me. I'm not going to just leave you guys with some boring stuff like that. I've got something cool, really cool planned, and that exists back here. I've got this giant swimming pool, and a game we love to play in swimming pools is called Marco Polo. And so I'm going to put this guy in the middle here, and I put one of the other guys, he'll be the seeker on the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and turn him on, and then he's going to wait to receive messages from this guy. So he's going to yell out, broadcast Marco. As soon as this guy gets a Marco, he'll broadcast Polo, and then that guy will be able to know how far away he is based on the message, um, the distance value, and he'll try and make it close to this guy. This guy, on the other hand, is just going to move randomly. So let's keep going. I'm going to go high up so you guys can see this. Maybe I can fly. There we go. Okay, so you see our, our Marco guy is calling out Marco. He's looking for him. He's checking random directions to see where the distance decrements. Okay, he's found the decrement got smaller, so he's going to move closer to him. He's almost got him. Whoa, oh, he backed up. So he does this kind of little dance thing to find when the distance gets smaller. He's getting close. Nope, the distance got bigger, so he tried to turn. He's almost there. Turn! Get him! Oh. <laughs> I'm not, it's not the best search algorithm that he's running because all we have is one value to the distance. We don't have x, y, or anything like that. Oh, got him! And you can see uh, number six is the winner. That's just repeat Marco Polo. So what we could do now, go ahead and delete these two. Put this guy here again. Let's put that guy there, and this guy here. And those guys are both hunters. Oops, I forgot to turn them on. Here they go. Let's see who gets there first. I think the IDs of the 200 turtles are 6 or an 11. Oh, synchronized. <laughs> They're both running the same search algorithm. Um, what I was thinking it could do have a little competition where people write search algorithms where if you're given a distance value uh, You can take an action and see who can create the best hunting program but You can see even though they had the same algorithm they're uh, moving in you know, Definitely going different ways. 
Oh, it's getting close. Getting close. Turn. Get him. Got him. Number six is the winner. Sorry, number 11. You lose. Destroyed. Anyway, this has been Funshine X with uh, modem tutorials and computer craft. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions on modems, you either can make a comment uh, in the video or check out the computer craft forums. They're really helpful people there. Uh, they've got some, a lot of sample code and a lot of helpful guys to answer your questions. So uh, keep watching. Um, I think I've covered most of the APIs. If there's some API that you guys need me to cover, uh, go ahead and let me know in a message. And if not, I'm going to just start writing some cool programs to do cool things. Um, I want to do more with my uh, computer craft arcade and uh, hopefully show off some of the programs I did there. Um, really quickly, I'll show you guys the code for those, the Marco Polo. Uh, let's start with the Polo. As soon as he boots up, he broadcasts a uh, message called Go, and he starts a timer. And every one second, he's going to broadcast out Polo and move in a random direction. The Marco, on the other hand, uh, he's going to wait till he receives that Go message and he's going to broadcast out Marco and then check to see if he receives a message called Polo. And if he does, then he's going to compare the, uh, the current distance away with the previous distance. Um, and if, it, if it's smaller, then he's gotten closer and he should move forward. If it's further away, then he's going to uh, back up, turn right, and then move forward just to see maybe that'll get him closer and then he'll check again. Uh, checking, setting the previous distance. As soon as he gets less than or equal to one, he knows he's at the uh, prey or the polo player and he can know that he wins. And so he breaks out and says, I win. That's the code. Pretty simple. Not a lot of complex stuff there. Uh, it's been fun. Shine X with Computer Graph Tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you later. Bye.